What is good, Grey Gang? We're out here at the pond today. We're actually going to be doing a little bit of catfishing, and we've got hot dogs back here in the back we're going to be using. But I'm thinking first, I got a little yeet worm on there anyhow. Let's just throw a few casts and try to catch a bass. We may not catch anything, but we might. You never know. The exact worm we're using is a KG yeet worm, and we're using it in the snow white color. It's actually the same exact worm and same exact setup that we was using last time. I've literally not even retied. I don't think it'll be too bad, though. Basically, all I'm going to do is throw it up on the banks. I have confirmed that the bass are actually pretty active, and they're moving up on the the banks now so i'm just gonna throw it up on the bank let it sit for a couple seconds then just jerk it jerk it jerk it jerk it, jerk it and then just like let it sit for a couple more seconds the way that this bait works the best is whenever you're just pausing it and letting it fall on a slack line because that's whenever its tail just wiggles all the way down so don't be afraid to just let it pause for a few seconds beside a special piece of cover or something because that's when it's really going to get the most bites like there's a tree right over there underwater I'm gonna toss it right over there to the edge of the tree and literally just give it slack line and watch my line. Since you are giving it slack line, you're probably not gonna feel the bite, but the way that you know you have a bite is you watch your line on top of the water and if it jerks all of a sudden or starts going out really fast, that's whenever you know you got a bass. Oh snap, there's a bass, there's a bass right there. I'm sight fishing now. Let's see if I can just barely get it over there next to him. It's uh, it's sinking beside of him. I don't know. We'll see if he takes the bait today. He didn't seem big anyways. He seemed pretty small. At least we know they're active though. I think we may have one right there. Oh man, he had it in his mouth. I was just watching it. My line started going out faster than normal and even started curving over to the left right there. Okay guys, well we didn't catch anything. We did get one good bite and then I also seen a bass over there in that far corner, but he just wasn't interested. I don't know, maybe he already ate a frog this morning. But now we're gonna get into catfish. And I really do think we can catch something here as long as it don't start raining first. But I dug deep in my freezer and found these no byproduct ballpark hot dog frank pork chickens they also expired a year ago but i don't think the catfish care that much as for us i'm just gonna pull out the old kg pocket knife right here the more traditional ones like the stockman and trapper they're actually on sale so if you want to go pick one of those up can worry one dog off for as long as you also we're having the kg fishing sale right now if you use code kg spring 10 that'll get you 10 percent off anything on the website fishing related at all but right here we have about the size of hot dog we're wanting we're not gonna do anything too crazy we're just literally going to put it on a hook and throw it out there weightless and then well if it starts taking off we'll set the hook and eat that little thing up here but yeah i mean that's pretty much it since these hot dogs are out of date they're most likely radioactive at this point so i'm going to try to avoid touching it as much as possible since it's a catfish they are not tackle shy what that means is that uh well you can have a really big hook really big sinker and a really thick line and they're not going to care that's a, that's a pretty well proven fact but that right there that's about the it's about very simple i mean just standard hook and hot dog on it you don't get much simpler than that catfish really aren't that picky as long as it has a little bit of nutritional value they'll eat it whether that be a hot dog a chicken liver chicken breast old shoe they don't care guys they're just down for whatever now the challenge is finding some cool way to let my steering wheel hold up my rod because i'm too lazy to hold it the whole time i think we just figured it out right there son now once it finally hits the bottom since it is weightless it's going to take a second but i'll just come over here reel up the slack and that way now that the slack is reeled up we'll know that whenever the slack starts going that way or this way or that way that's when we'll know it's about time to catch fish and right on cue the rain is here how great oh there he goes oh he's got one let's see is he still there is he still there we had a pretty good hit right there. It's solid. He about jerked, broke the rod right there. Tell you what, catfish can be a little finicky. I'm going to put my rod right back and wait for him to hit again because, well, oh, there he goes. Okay, there he is. There he is. He's got him now. Oh, no. No, Kendall, you pulled it up too fast. I got too excited, man. I got too excited. He definitely hit it twice. And it's definitely a catfish too because it, well, it was way too big to be a bluegill. I'm just going to I'm just gonna throw it right back in there. Let it sink to the bottom. Do the same exact thing. It may not take him long to hit again as long as he can find it again. Set that right in there. And uh, now all we got to do is wait. There he is. There he is. Oh, did you see that? He just hit it again. I'm going to give him more time though. I'm gonna see if he can take it more this time. Come on, big one. There he goes, he's got it. Go up there, okay, there he is, he's hooked now. He's hooked now. There he is, oh yeah. I just let him hook himself that time. He played with it about two or three times. Oh snap, he ain't bad, is he? He played with it a couple times and that last time I just, I just left it on the steering wheel. I let him hook himself. Just went ahead and let him decide whenever he was ready. He's coming up, we'll see how big he is. He, he ain't small, I mean he's not the, He's not a 580 pounder like they get out of the Ohio River, but he's not completely small. He's good eating size. We ain't gonna eat him today because well, I wanna catch him in the next tomorrow or something probably. We are gonna give him a name 
And he, from what I can see, which is nothing, he looks like a David. Oh gosh, yeah, he definitely looks like a David. I'm here, Dave. Yeah, we can call him Dave for short. That's respectful. That's respectful. We're on a friendly basis. I remember in this pond whenever all the catfish were like, I don't know, maybe a foot long, and uh, none of them were really bigger than that. And then over the past three years, they've gotten absolutely massive. And I'll be honest, I don't know what they're eating because I don't really feed them that much. I feed them probably once a month, three pieces of bread. So they're definitely eating maybe other fish. Come on up, Dave. Oh, snap, Dave. How big are you now? 60 pound? Yeah, it's probably 60, 70 pound. Maybe pushing 80, but we won't be that generous today. Oh, son, what are you doing? I would, I would lip him, but I don't want to do that. Bite me, son. Bite me, David. No? Hmm? No? Okay. I like that. It's called mutual respect. You, I respected you, so you're going to respect me. That's how the world ought to be, buddy. Look at there. Hook really wasn't even in there. Just there by pressure. One quick question I got. Look how fat his belly is. But another quick question I got. What's these little dots on his back? And uh, who's been shooting him with a BB gun? Because is that what really happened? That's what it looks like happens. Looks like he's been in like airsoft war and he got lit up, son. Someone took a little automatic AK and lit you up. You wasn't hiding behind the hay bale enough. Now, for some of you guys who are screaming in the comments saying I'm not supposed to lip a catfish, that's kind of true because a lot of times they will bite you. But me and him, guys, we have a symbiotic relationship. It's mutual respect. If you guys are wondering that politically, correct way to hold a catfish what you want to do is come under these spines right here because these fins ow he's biting me J david i thought we were respectful here this is a kid's channel stop this is a kid's channel we don't do that ah stop david stop david stop stop that stop that it's david david it's david i said i said i said stop thank you stop david stop I'm about to kick you like a field. <laughs> Guys, that's why you're not supposed to hold a catfish like that. Catfish are one of those fish where, like, they, they are respectful, but they can only be respectful for so long before they rip up your finger and you start bleeding. Next thing you know, you take a short nap and you wake up in heaven. But anyways, the absolute perfect way to grab a catfish is you go between the three spines. You got this, this fin is a spine. It's basically, it's literally a bone and it's super sharp. Same way for this one and this one right up here up on top. So what you wanna do is you kinda wanna grab them by the bottom. They're not easy to hold. Sometimes you gotta go two hands if they're big. You put your thumb under this fin and this fin in between your pointing finger and your middle finger. If it's big enough, you go two hands, but you know, this one's not big enough. David, I kinda liked you at the beginning, but now you've, uh, well, we're gonna have to aim take my finger thanks bud see you never <laughs> david's a little meanie i think i'm done fishing because i gotta go to the emergency room i'm not gonna be using these hot dogs for anything else so i'm just gonna go ahead and throw them in the fawn feed the fish but i do have to be careful because like i said earlier these are a year out of date therefore they are radioactive and as we all know if you get radioactive biomaterial in your in an open wound well you're really set up for disaster have you ever seen that i just skipped a hot dog on the water forget a flat stone i got a hot dog yeah, guys, if I never make a video again, you know why. <laughs> I died. Catfish killed me. And now after we caught that catfish, it's actually raining, so I wanted to give y'all a little something inside. Now, there's been a lot of people asking for a Kendall Gray comprehensive arsenal gun review on everything I have. If I'm going to give you the honest answer about that question, I really don't know if I feel comfortable revealing everything I have. You got to keep some secrets, okay? But I figured today I would come at y'all and show you a gun that y'all haven't seen before from me, at least. It is an AR, and you may be thinking, Kendall, dude, that's literally an AR. That's uh, that's like one of the most common guns in America. Yeah, but this one's chambered in 50 Beowulf. Now, if you don't know what a 50 Beowulf is, this is the caliber. It is 50 caliber. It's the same diameter as a 50 BMG, but it fits in an AR package. Now, you may be asking, Kittle Dave, why aren't you showing us the bullet like in person? It's because I don't have any, and I don't even know where to get them. These bullets are so hard to find. Everywhere I've been in person, I can't find them. I'm having a hard time finding them even online. But that ain't stopping me from having the gun. I've never shot it, not once. But I'm just going to show you to you anyhow. It's a good old AR. Got the KG Red Dot up top. I mean, it is stinking ready to... It's stinking ready to go, son. These things I've heard kick pretty good too. Such a cool gun, but you can't use it because you can't find ammo. What a tragedy. If any of you guys have a bunch of 50 Beowulf just laying around under your bed or something and you don't like it, go ahead and ship it over here, man. We'll put it to use. But now, since it is Saturday, it is time for the first of the week. And this one's a pretty good one, I'll tell you this. It's got a little bit to do with the Corona. 
Isaiah 41 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And just like the verse is saying, guys, we shouldn't be fearing stuff like the coronavirus. We should be truly trusting in God that He's going to take care of us, and whatever He wants to happen is going to happen. When they're just because God's on our side, that doesn't mean that we can go stand in the railroad tracks and expect a train to drive around us. Okay, just because you believe in Jesus doesn't mean that you can jump out in front of a car and you're going to be okay. Use common sense, because if you don't use common sense, then you're really not doing much wrong. So yeah, whatever happens in God's plan is going to happen, but that doesn't mean that you should go around coughing on old people if you have the coronavirus. You still got to use your brain a little bit.